Hi there, these comments are for PA and I am Michael from OTC, online .com. How's it going? And uh, in your email, actually, when we've, you're one of my TOEFL writing boot camp course students, right? So you sent me an email, you had some questions, and you sent me another practice test you want me to score, right? Now, I've already error corrected the number of uh, practice tests that I promised to do as a writing boot camp student, right? I've already done that. Uh, let's take a look at what your question is here. You say, uh, hi, Michael, thanks for your help. I'm having trouble writing compound complex sentences without punctuation errors. Besides that, I'm concerned I'm repeating the same mistakes in my writing. Would it be possible for you to leave comments on specific errors in sentences or punctuation as part of your written feedback? If not, understand, but I think that receiving your remarks could really boost my score. So you're right now, this practice test is around 24 points. Uh, I think if you can solve these sentence structure errors, I believe that you can get 30. I believe this. You can get 30 out of 30. I believe it. Do you believe it? Think about it, because I believe that. Okay, so let's do this. Let me give you some basic instruction on forming a compound complex sentence, and then let's look at what's called the punctuation patterns. See if I can give you some, some ideas on how to do that. Okay? So first of all, you have to understand what a compound sentence is first. So you might say, I went to the store to buy some bread, give something simple, and my friend traveled with me. Right? So in this case, we have what's called a com compound sentence, right? Okay, now, a compound sentence uses one of the fanboys to connect the two independent clauses together. Now, one of the fanboys means for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and then so. So it uses one of those coordinating conjunctions to connect the two sentences together. Now the punctuation pattern on a compound sentence is relatively simple. It is you put the comma right before the coordinating conjunction. Now if the first independent clause is maybe two or three words and there's no danger of misreading the sentence, the comma is optional. Okay, so that's what you want to remember there. Okay, now number two. A complex sentence has an independent clause and a dependent clause. So then you say, I went to the store because I wanted to buy some bread. Right, so in this case, the, the reason that this is a complex sentence is because we have a subordinated conjunction. So words like uh, because, although, who, that, in which, whereas, in as much as, these are all what we call subordinated conjunctions. They introduce dependent clauses. Now, a punctuation pattern here that I want you to be aware of, which can help you when you begin creating other types of sentences, is when the dependent clause is in the beginning of the sentence, it's very common to put the comma after the dependent clause. And then you put the um, independent clause after that. So you have, because I wanted to buy some bread, I went to the store, right? So notice, in this case, the dependent clause occurs first, we have the comma, and then we have the independent clause after that. Now, once we understand the basics of a complex sentence, if you understand what a compound sentence is, then 
you can understand the compound complex sentence because we simply need to combine these two. So then let's go to three. So, so far we have compound sentence here. Now we have an example of a complex sentence. We have two different examples there. Now let's take a look at And then let's look at the punctuation patterns because what you don't want to do is this. Let me show you what you're having trouble with. You're basically taking a subject and a verb and then you're putting a comma and then you're creating another subject and another verb. So you might say, I went to the store to buy some Then you put a comma, my friend went with me. So this is what we call comma splice. You can Google this. And this is going to show the IBT human raters you don't have good sentence control. And that's not what you want to show them. If you want to get 30 out of 30, right, which I think you can do, you got to get everything right. You got to do it all right. Everything's got to be good. Sentence structure, verb tense, a number of transition words, good thesis, topic sentences, really adequate supporting details. You got to get it all right. All has to be, everything has to be in order to get the perfect score, right? And I really believe you can do this. And this is why I'm spending time right now talking to you. A, you're my TOEFL Writing Bootcamp student. TOEFL Writing Bootcamp course student. B, you're scoring between uh, 24 and 28 points in the writing right now. I think with some few changes, if you can learn what I'm teaching you in this lesson, I think that you will be able to score higher. Okay, so we have um, the complex sentence. Now let's move on to the compound complex. So let's go back to the compound. It will be easy to form it from the compound sentence. Okay, let's do this. I went to the store. Now I'm going to take to buy some bread and change that to a dependent clause. I went to the store because I wanted to buy some bread and my friend traveled with me. So the punctuation pattern here, it depends on how you want to create the compound complex sentence. In this case, the punctuation occurs right before the coordinating conjunction because you are separating these two independent clauses. And because the dependent clause occurs at the end of the first independent clause, there's no comma needed uh, after the word store. So that's the first punctuation pattern. This is what you want to remember. I'm going to try to show you different ways of doing this. Now here's another one. Let's say that you want to put the dependent clause in the very beginning of the sentence, right, in the complex, right? Let's see how that works out. So you'll say, because I wanted to buy some bread, comma, I went to the store, another comma, and then So let's look at it. Because I wanted to buy some bread, comma, I went to the store, comma, and my friend traveled with me. 
So that would be a punctuation pattern for a compound complex sentence if you put the dependent clause in the very beginning of the sentence. That's what it's going to look like. Now, if you put it at the end of that first independent clause, this is your punctuation pattern. Simply putting one comma right before the coordinating conjunction. Right? Now, you'll probably see, I think it's possible, you'll see this sometimes in academic writing. Because I wanted to buy some, uh, some bread, I went to the store. They'll just put the one comma right before the independent clause, but you could put both because this dependent clause is relatively long and you want to separate that support idea from the main idea. Okay, so I think that's it. <laughs> so what you can do is, if you want to do this, why don't you practice writing some example compound complex sentences and not the whole essay and then send it to me and I'll tell you if they're correct or not. Right, I'll give you some feedback on that. So I think that's something you can do to help work on your grammar. Now, here's your essay that you wrote. Essay number six here, you, do, do you agree or disagree with the following statement? Teachers are more appreciated and valued by society in the past than they are nowadays. Use specific reasons and examples to support your answer. I barely gave you 24 points on this one. So 3.75 out of five. 24 points out of 30. Now let's, let's take some time and I'm just going to edit one of your paragraphs. I've already done all your video correction. As you know, it can take up to one hour just to correct one essay. So that's why I have to charge so much for that service. When students have writing errors, they're severe, they're serious. And they're difficult to correct sometimes. In some cases, I have to rewrite the whole paragraph just to keep, just to get the topic right, and to have it to have paragraph unity. So let's take a look at your very first paragraph. I'm going to try to talk through some of your errors. Retreat not only means treating people. Okay, this is your first problem. This is called parallelism. If you say not only means treating people, but also means valuing their expertise levels, right? But if you take the verb here, let's say that we're going we're gonna to get rid of that. We're going to put it right before the paired conjunction. So now look at the parallelism. Not only treating, but also valuing. So now we no longer have a parallel structure issue there. What do you want to remember here is paired conjunctions, not only, but also. Neither, nor, either, or, both, and, so that, such as. These paired conjunctions, you must put similar grammatical structures on both sides of the paired conjunction. And that's exactly what I did. So respect means not only treating people, but also valuing their expertise levels. Then you have, the problem is, you have another independent clause directly after that. You say educators are not an exception to this scenario. So what you've done is, is you're going back to this error. This is a comma slice, right? You don't want to do that. So how do you fix it? It's very easy. Just change the comma to a semicolon. That's great. Or, or you could put, you got several choices. You could put and, Respect means not only treating people, but also valuing their expertise levels, and educators are not an exception to this scenario. Or you could get rid of and and put a semicolon. Or you can put a period after levels and then say educators, but you want to be careful about having too many short sentences. That's typically not what you want to do on the TOEFL IBT writing section. Okay, let's keep going. Educators are unsung heroes who provide education to people. But then you have fine ways. You have are and you have fine. You have two verbs in the main part of the sentence. We've got to go back to our rule one more time. Right? You have one subject and one verb in a sentence. If you have more than one subject or more than one verb, you need some kind of connector. 
and we can fix this easily, very easy to fix. So educators are unsung heroes, and I don't think you need a comma here because I look at the adjective clause as being necessary to identify that, who provide education to people and who. I think we have it. Educators are unsung heroes who provide education to people and who find ways to enhance students' knowledge by working arduously and sacrificing their personal time. But you see what you're doing here? If you're using the word and and you put a you put a comma before and, usually that's if you have a compound sentence. You remember this punctuation pattern? I went to the store to buy some bread, comma, and my friend traveled with me. But what have we got here? We don't have a compound sentence here. You have, by working arduously and by sacrificing their personal time, you're using and to simply join two gerund phrases together. So the comma is not needed there. Now what you want to do is go to my online TOEFL course. I want you to review in the grammar part of my course, I have two videos. When to use commas, when not to use commas. Watch the video. Because if you can control your punctuation better, guess what? You control your sentence structure better. And if you control your sentence structure, guess what's going to happen to your writing score? It's going all the way up. Going to score a lot higher. Okay, in earlier days, people had a trustworthy relationship with teachers because they have faith in them. But today, people are more concerned about technological advancements and looking for other sources of information rather than a teacher. Yes, what did you just do here? You have a compound complex sentence, which is exactly correct. So, I know you can do this. How do I know this? Look at this. You just wrote, let's look at this. You just wrote a 37 word sentence, which is grammatically correct. In earlier days, people had a trustworthy relationship with teachers, right? You didn't put the comma before because, because it's a dependent clause, because they have faith in them. Now you put the comma after them and before the coordinated conjunction because but is one of the fanboys, so you're trying to connect the independent clauses together. But today, people are more concerned about technological advancements and about looking for other sources of information rather than a teacher. So I think you did a good job here. I'm just gonna put this in parentheses because it's not really needed. So you just wrote a 37 word sentence with no grammar errors. However, you had a very short sentence and you had a sentence structure error, go figure. So I know you can do this. Uh, so from my perspective in the past, teachers received more appreciation than today because of accessibility of information with the advent of technology and declining, I don't think that we need a comma here. We have, and if, if you look at this, and declining quality of services provided by educators, it means services which are or which were provided by educators due to a lack of resources and government funding. So in this case, you don't need the comma before and because you're not connecting what's called a compound sentence here. Right, you did say, and teachers receive more appreciation than today. That's the independent clause. Then you put because of blah, blah, blah. Because of accessibility of information, but that's a prepositional phrase. This is basically a simple sentence, believe it or not. So there's no comma needed before that coordinating conjunction. Okay, so and that's pretty much it. So as I look over the essay, right, I made some corrections in the first paragraph. You have a few more errors in the other paragraphs, and this is why I gave you on this one uh, 24 points uh, out of 30, a uh, 3.75 out of 5. 
All right, so there you go. So I think I answered your question about creating compound complex sentences and giving you some punctuation patterns there. Your punctuation right now is maybe 50-50. What does that mean? It means about 50% of the time you're using it correctly and then 50% of the time you are not. Now, here is the last piece of advice I'm going to give you in this video and this lesson today. Okay, here's the message about commas. If you're not sure about whether or not a comma is needed, don't use it. Don't put it in there. Now, if you know the rule and you know why, put it in there. But if you're guessing, it's better to guess and not use a comma than to put the comma in the wrong place. All right? Now, hang in there. You can do this. Believe me, you will score 30 out of 30 on the TOEFL IBT writing section. I believe this. I know you can do this. You know how to write your thesis. Your topic sentences are clearly framed. You do a great job at presenting very specific details in those body paragraphs. You really understand how to write a coherently developed essay. You have a few sentence structure and punctuation errors you need to work out, and you're on your way to getting a high score.